Hello, my name is Brianna Guthridge, and I'm currently a fourth year medical student at the Philadelphia College of Osteopathic Medicine. I'll be presenting a case report of a patient with a vertical patellar fracture. This case report was done under the guidance of Dr. Bradley Fink. This patient is a 54-year-old male who presented with pain and swelling of the right anterior knee and anterior lower thigh one day after falling directly onto the knee. The patient also complained of difficulty ambulating and avoided bearing weight on the right side. There was also a visible large joint effusion. The patient had not tried anything for pain relief and had no associated symptoms. Of note, the patient's history was significant for osteoarthritis of the right knee. The image on the left is an AP radiograph of the right knee demonstrating a linear density through the lateral facet of the patella. This is indicated by the blue arrow. The image in the center is a skyline view radiograph of the right knee showing the same linear density through the lateral facet of the patella. Posterior displacement of the lateral fragment can also be appreciated in this image. The image on the right is a lateral radiograph of the right knee demonstrating a joint effusion, which is indicated by the yellow arrow, and prepatellar soft tissue swelling, which is indicated by the white arrow. The image on the left is an axial CT of the right lower extremity, demonstrating similar findings to those seen on the prior radiographs. A linear hypodensity can be seen through the lateral third of the patella. Bone fragmentation is appreciated at the posterior aspect of this linear hypodensity. This is indicated by the blue arrow. Prepatellar soft tissue swelling can be seen and is indicated by the white arrow. A knee joint effusion is indicated by the yellow arrow. There is no osteochondral fragment or loose body. The knee joint is intact without dislocation. The image on the right is a coronal CT of the right lower extremity, demonstrating the same linear hypodensity seen in the prior images. Bone fragmentation can also be appreciated along the lateral facet of the patella and is indicated by the blue arrow. This next image is a sagittal CT through the right lower extremity demonstrating intact patellar and quadriceps tendons in addition to prepatellar soft tissue swelling indicated by the white arrow and a knee joint effusion indicated by the yellow arrow. The final diagnosis in this case is a vertical patellar fracture. The linear hypodensity through the lateral facet of the patella seen in several of the prior images represents a vertically oriented fracture line. Knee joint effusions and inability to extend the knee are both common in patellar fractures and were both present in this patient after direct patellar trauma. Lastly, there is no bony cortex appreciated on the opposing margins of the bony fragments. This is an important distinction to make when differentiating patellar fractures from the top differential diagnosis of bipartite patella. As mentioned in the prior slide, the top differential diagnosis in this patient is bipartite patella. Bipartite patella is a developmental anomaly that results in two distinct fragments of patella. The fragments typically have bony cortex on opposing margins rather than a distinct fracture line. Bipartite patella is typically asymptomatic but can cause pain when exacerbated by trauma or overuse. Lastly, soft tissue swelling and knee joint effusions can occur in the setting of acute trauma to bipartite patella, but their presence favors acute patellar fracture. The following are important take-home messages from this case. Number one, patellar fractures can be extremely debilitating due to disruption in the ability to walk, climb stairs, and stand from a seated position. This is because the patella plays an important role in the extensor mechanism of the knee, and fracture of the patella disrupts this mechanism. Number two, skyline view should always be obtained in suspected patellar fractures, as vertically oriented fractures are often missed on other views. Number three, CT may play an important role in evaluation of patellar fractures as some studies suggest that the addition of CT changed management in almost 50% of cases. Number four, multiple variables such as fracture pattern, degree of displacement, number of fragments, ambulatory status, involvement of articular surface, and stability of the extensor mechanism determine direction of treatment.